All right, so there's a lot of hype around computer science in recent years, and especially if you haven't already decided on another career trajectory, then going the route of CS probably sounds like a pretty good option. But just like anything else, going into computer science has its downsides, and that's why it might not necessarily be the best option for you. And after watching this video, if you still want to go into computer science, I just made another video talking about all the reasons why you should go into computer science, so you can check that out. But this is why you shouldn't go into computer science. In a field as lucrative as computer science, it's almost inevitable that a lot of people will pursue it with the intent of raking in huge paychecks, great perks, and a pretty nice benefits package. To be clear, all of those things do exist in industry, oftentimes at the same company, but those packages are generally reserved for the very top performers and not the average person. Now, I've always maintained that the people who are just going into computer science looking for a payday will generally either one, drop out part of the way through because it's a lot of work and it can be really challenging, especially when you're not enjoying it, or two, they'll slog their way through it without ever really excelling or going the extra mile. The issue is, if you're one of those people, then you're probably not one of the top performers, in which case you probably won't be able to get into one of those top companies that motivated you in the first place to go into computer science. If you're already interested in computer science, then the pay, the perks, the benefits, can all be a nice bonus on top of that. But if you're going in with money being your only motivation, then that might not work out as well as you're hoping it will. Being able to problem solve and then to translate those solutions into clean code is naturally going to require some level of creativity. Software development isn't really a mechanical process. You might have some standardized procedures that you follow when you're working through problems, but challenging issues generally don't magically solve themselves. In this context, thinking creatively is about recognizing the scope of your constraints and the tools at your disposal, and when you can't change the variables that you want to change, recognizing what you can do to work around the problem because the straightforward solution isn't always available. Naturally, not everything about development is creative. There are some processes that are pretty automatic, and sometimes you sit down and code something and it's pretty mechanical because you already know what you're going to do, but pretty much any real software development team is going to face its fair share of nasty issues that are going to require creative solutions. If you can't think outside the box or problem solve, or you just don't want to have to do a ton of thinking on a daily basis as part of your job, the computer science probably isn't going to be a good match for you. There's a flip side to these computer science jobs you hear about that have great work-life balance and low stress, where you're working in a fast-paced, demanding environment and you're constantly worried about losing your job or ruining someone's life. Depending on your company's culture, there can be a huge amount of internal competition to the point where your coworkers aren't your friends, they're really the people you're competing against, and all they care about is making sure that when the next review comes around, they're not the one on the chopping block. You also might have to work long hours or be on call in the middle of the night in case something happens, or you're just constantly up against unrealistic deadlines set by upper management. The work itself can also be stressful depending on what it is. A buggy life critical system can mean life or death scenarios, or a mistake in the AI you're working on for your autonomous vehicle might hit a pedestrian. Basically, what you're doing when you're working from home in your pajamas is going to be affecting thousands if not millions of people that you'll never meet. To be clear, there are a ton of jobs in computer science that are considered low stakes and low stress and are still able to provide value to the world, but there's also a lot of opportunities that if you mess something up, it could have huge ramifications for a lot of people. In the grand scheme of things, computer science is still a relatively young field, and given that it's entirely based around technology, it is always evolving and changing. Which means if you're hoping to learn a set of skills once and then just rely on that knowledge for the remainder of your career, then computer science probably isn't a good fit. Some of the core fundamentals might stay the same, and changes generally don't happen overnight, but you're probably not going to be doing the same development in 30 years that you're learning right now. You don't need to know about every new development going on in the field, but if you can't even be bothered to keep up with the major breakthroughs in your niche in terms of the new tools and languages and just other things that are going to help you do your job better, then you're immediately going to start falling behind as soon as you graduate from college. If you're passionate about computer science, then learning more about it probably won't seem like a chore, but if you're relatively new to it and it seems like a pain, then going into computer science might not make the most sense for you. If you're still interested in computer science after watching this video and you haven't already seen it, make sure you check out the other video I just dropped on all the reasons why you should go into computer science. Anyways, that's it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.